Hello everyone, this is Sophia again. So today we have another mirror webinar and we have a really exciting topic and it's about how to get pregnant in 2023. I think that's probably one of the most relevant topic we have with your, our audience. Um, and today I'm so happy to have Amy and Amy is the uh, celebrity acupuncturist and the coach. And she has been working with the women's health and the fertility um, coaching and also, you know, education research for a while. She also has written some books about uh, how to get pregnant and how to care for your woman's health and uh, fertility. So again, as usual, um, I like to, we like to welcome everyone here and we have a lot of people here. I think this room is full. Um, and if you can just type in your comments about where you come from so we can say hi to you and my team member Paulina is a coordinator and uh, um, you can type your questions to the chat along this presentation and only Paulina will collect them and we will answer them at the end of this presentation so without overdue I will let Amy to introduce yourself please oh. well thank you so much Sylvia for having me and Mira for having me I'm honored to be here um, I absolutely love your product and recommend it uh, a lot so i really appreciate the work you've done in bringing that to the market i think it's uh, really helpful to so many women out there and so yes as sylvia said i am uh amy ralph i've been doing this uh work for two decades now as uh, originally started as an acupuncturist and herbalist i'm still currently an acupuncturist and herbalist um and started writing books on women's health about 12 years ago and um, the, bo the books that you would be most interested in, I think, are Yes, You Can Get Pregnant and my most recent book called The Egg Quality Diet. And I see everybody coming in, um, San Diego, that's where I went to grad school. Welcome, Ireland, PA, everything's so exciting. Um, thanks for being here, guys. It's, it's an honor to be able to come and support the community. And so, yes, for me, like I said, you know, I'm two decades into helping women get and stay pregnant. So I've been, um, you know, in this field for a long time and have seen it really change and shift, you know, back when I first started in the, in the, in the age old days, we were just using BBT and that's all we could really do. And blood work had to be done in a lab. And it's really nice to have things like Mira now to really help me as a clinician, see my patients cycles and really understand them and help them really kind of nail the timing or potentially what's what's going on and so today the plan is to um without making too many promises to to show you what i think are um, some necessary steps for you all to incorporate into your life so that uh, pregnancy is a real option for you in 2023 right I, I know many of you are using mira and following along because that is your ultimate goal is to to get and to stay pregnant um so, yeah, if you want to learn more about me, you can always go to my website, amyraup.com. Um, and Sylvia, I don't know if you want to. Uh, great. Yeah, thank you, Amy, for that introduction. So I'm Sylvia. I think a lot of you guys already might know me. So I have a, uh, I'm the co-founder and the CEO for Mira, and I've been hosting this webinar for a while. And uh, my goal is really, you know, help every woman, every family who are trying to understand better about their fertility health and really, you know, having a good understanding and having some tools and that's scientific based, that's affordable and that's personalized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I, I'm a strong believer that there's a really lack of focus still in the women's health research and we lack of, of this kind of tool to help women to know better about their body. So that's our goal. And we'll talk a little bit about Mira later, but basically Mira is trying to help you to achieve your fertility goal regardless is what that is um we we do that based on uh, very accurate testing hormone based testing and every every test is quantitative so we give you your actual hormone number and the algorithm will learn in a personalized way so you will know what's going on with your body yeah. and just a little disclaimer so everything we talk about here is for educational purpose only so it's not going to replace your physician's advice and so if you have any uh, medical issue and you still need to uh, consult with your physicians. And the last thing I want to do before we start the presentation is we want to understand better about you. So I'm going to share four questions on the screen. It's a poll. 
and uh, please help me to complete so you know our topic will be more tailored to what you need. This is so, cool. so we'll give 30 seconds to complete this survey. So I can already start to see some trend. So regarding how long have you been trying to conceive? Uh, most of our audience, about 41% is between one to six months. And the, regarding the age, wow, almost everyone's between 29 to 45, like 50, about 45%, 29 to 35, and the, another 45%, 35 to 45. Thank you for the answer. And the, do you track your fertility hormone level? 67% track. So that's really great job. And uh, tell us more about your fertility journey. So 92% are actively trying to mm -hmm. conceive. That's great. Okay, so then that we I, I'm gonna give the screen to Amy. So Amy has a presentation for everyone. And uh, Amy, please. Yeah, and the one thing I want to add is you should increase that age range up to 48 because that is the eldest woman I've worked with at this stage using her own eggs and who is actively using Mira. I this year alone have had. I think at least five women, 47 and 48, get and stay pregnant with healthy children with their own eggs. So just just a word of advice. Right. <laughs> um, I you know if any of my people are following, there's women older than 45. On. <laughs> so let's include them. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Step by step, how to get pregnant in 2023. So again, uh, like Sylvia pointed out, um, of course, all of this, you know, you know, have a healthcare team, and I'm going to get into that too, of like who the right team is for you and how to find that. But know that this is advice based on my clinical experience um, and my experience in, in writing books and working with women for two decades, but that not to be taken strictly as medical advice. So thank you for that. Um, so again, you know, I've been either coaching with women, um, you know, I now have a team of coaches and we work with women all over the world and have been, been doing so for about seven years at this point. And then um, as a clinician, as an acupuncturist and herbalist for uh, 19 years at this point, I believe that there are very, there are trends that I see that work for women when they are trying to conceive. And um, and they're, they're fairly basic is like uh, choosing one clinician or I really think even a team of clinicians that is aligned with you. So finding um, doctors, acupuncturists, herbalists, naturopaths, functional medicine doctors, you know, coaches, et cetera, that are aligned with you, meaning that they believe, you know, at 92% of the women on here, I think according to this poll, um, are actively trying to get pregnant. And so, you know, I'll, I'll speak to that. And even the ones who are curious about fertility and wanting to get pregnant soon, have someone that is on your side, on your team, that, that believes in the possibility of this happening for you. Um, so often, and really a main reason why I wrote my book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, was really because I felt like so many women were being told that this was going to be hard and that this wasn't likely an option for them or that they needed to freeze their eggs immediately or consider IVF or donor eggs or and there's nothing wrong with any of those things so just also keep that in mind but that you really do want at least one person on your team that is cheering for you and believes in your body and in its ability to do what you want it to do and I also think um you know, using tools like Mira is, is highly advantageous so you can learn about your body. I, I really feel like clinically, the number one thing I do is, is teach women to understand and listen to their bodies again and understand what their body needs, what their body's telling them. And so finding that clinician, and it could be multiple clinicians that, that really feel aligned with you. And the next, and I think the most important thing is the consistency and frequency of making simple and effective shifts in your lifestyle, in your diet, in your mindset, in your approach to this fertility journey. So 
often I see women that come in and, you know, they'll say like, oh, I, I read your book and I'm doing all the things and I'm still not pregnant, you know, and, um, and of course they're super frustrated and, and I hear them and I, and I really understand that frustration. But when I dig deeper, it's typically, oh, well, I did the diet for two months and it didn't work. And like my cycle didn't shift at all. And so, you know, then I just kind of went back to the old things or when I, you know, this is kind of the whole reason I wrote my most recent book, The Egg Quality Diet, was when I would collect food diaries for clients um, and they would say, no, I'm, I'm doing all the things I really am. And, you know, I'm not really going to talk so much today about like what to remove from our diets because I feel like it's it's murky water and it just seems so overwhelming for so many. But really what to add and, and the goal of like getting enough vegetables and enough good quality animal protein. I think animal protein is extremely important to health and to fertility, good quality animal protein that is, choline rich, good quality fat, animal protein. But that when I was looking at food diaries, I just saw it was still, you know, maybe they were gluten free and dairy free and maybe soy free even, but there was a lot of, you know, oh, gluten free packaged products and not enough vegetables and definitely not enough protein and, you know, going long periods of time between meals. And so there was this inconsistency right in in their in their choices to support themselves and then even with meditation or with movement or with sleep that you know maybe 60 percent of the time um they were hitting the marks and and i really i think for some women moving the needle from not super fertile to more fertile just requires maybe 60 percent of the time you're doing these changes but for a lot of women it's 70 30 or even 80 20 and and understanding that the consistency and frequency is really what moves the needle and so um whatever it is you decide to do and we're going to go over kind of like my top 10 do's and my top 10 don'ts in in this um presentation but take it in and and really just try to think about like can i commit to consistently doing this and and i really think consistently for at least three months um even longer though you know many women what happens is they commit to consistently and frequently making these shifts and they see a dramatic difference in their health and what i always say is fertility is an extension of health they are not separate and and mirror is an amazing tool for helping us understand our hormones but you have to also understand that your hormone health is um not in a vacuum right it, it's coming from your your brain it's coming from your nervous system it's coming from your gut health it's coming from the level of inflammation in your body all of those come together and really impact your hormone health and so it's not just about what your estrogen is or when your lh surge is you know or how high your progesterone gets but you know and so many women will say to me but what do i do to raise my progesterone you know and it's like it really still comes back to the basics it's really about these consistent frequent um effective lifestyle shifts and uh, the third thing that i see as a really consistent um helper in women getting and staying pregnant is being in a tribe and whether or not you're like super active in that tribe or super overshare you don't have to go and start your own instagram account and share all about your journey like that doesn't have to be it or you don't have to um, join a ton of different forums. In fact, sometimes I think that can be overwhelming and confusing for many, but just feeling heard and seen, and most importantly, like you are not alone, you know, that you um, are surrounded or at least have a place to go to where there are other um, women actively trying to conceive maybe close ish in your age group maybe who have a similar diagnosis or diagnoses and um that you feel understood and you feel heard and and that could really easily happen through social media without spending any additional money joining a couple good groups even following you know um accounts like mira or myself i think just this sense of like there is this place where i can go for support there is this place where i can go and um, you know, I'm not alone. And so this little picture I love, um, you know, where I think these are the really important pieces of supporting your fertility journey. So like we just touched upon the community support, you're obviously there's, you know, hundreds of you here. So um, you you want this support, you're, you're eager for it, you're taking it in. Um, quality medical care and, you know by that i do really mean aligned um practitioners with you and 
And that might, for some of you, take several different uh, appointments to find the right team for you or several different journeys. You know, I have women, again, all over the world, and some of them are on their third or fourth doctor before they find the right fertility doctor that supports them if they are seeking assistive reproductive techniques. Some of them are on their third or fourth coach. Some of them are on their third or fourth acupuncturist. Finding a tribe, though, um, you know, of your medical team that, again, feels really aligned with you and hears you and understands you. A nutrient dense diet, which we'll we'll get into a little bit in the next slides. Um, but you know, my my basic premise of diet and, and to dive deeper, you know, my books are, are available everywhere. Um, you know, my goal, what I try to hit with my clients and, and when I'm what I where I see again the, the biggest shifts is women on average hitting about 80 grams of protein a day and six to eight servings of vegetables. And if you're eating good nutrient dense protein you're getting good quality fats. Fats are the ultimate in all the hormones, right? All of our hormones come from um, fat in our body, cholesterol, choline, uh, precursors to the entire uh, steroid hormone cascade, which, which makes up your progesterone, your estrogen, your LH, your FSH. And so understanding that fat is, is super important. Um, another piece here, I label it vitamin J and I, and I took that from one of my teachers and she always says it of like, are you getting your daily dose of vitamin J? So of course, supplements are a part of most women's journey and they should be. I think um, it's really hard to even from a nutrient dense, good quality diet to get everything we need just because our, our, our systems and our soils are so compromised these days. So we need supplements. But the, I think what the most important supplement is, is vitamin J, which um, means vitamin joy. So how much joy are you actively participating in in your life? You know, a lot of women that I see, and I'm sure many of you can relate, is um, life is on hold until I get this baby, until I get this positive pregnancy test. And, you know, that's the primary focus and everything else goes away. And so much of our you know, I think our feminine energy and, and even our hormones and uh, understanding kind of the role the, the brain plays and the nervous system plays in, in hormone production and hormone health does come from a feeling of not just safety, which I think is a very important piece, but, um, and by safety, I don't necessarily mean physical safety, which is obviously still very important, but just feeling safe in your body, feeling safe in the conversations you have in the privacy of your own mind, feeling safe in the relationships you keep, feeling safe in your um, nourishment, like giving your body enough of what it needs, but also feeling content, feeling full, feeling purposeful, right? All of that rather than waiting for the baby to make us purposeful, which is so easy for me to say and and you know everybody requires their own level of like digging into that to see what what can work for them but this is you know again what i think is is part of this fertility um puzzle and the next piece is this self-connection um and integrity and so by that i really mean of like how are you showing up for you and are you showing up in a way that feels aligned with your goals. So, right, just as we're saying, like seeking quality medical practitioners who are aligned with your goals, are you aligned with your goals? Are you connected to self enough to know how your lifestyle choices um, are impacting your health or not? And are you connected enough to say, okay, some of these things, you know, I need to be honest with myself. Some of these things need shifting, right? And how aligned am I in my everyday choices with the goals I'm trying to achieve? And so, I mean, things I typically see as, um, you know, overworking, under sleeping, um, under eating, over exercising as a means of health, yet no space for, um, for baby in a sense for no space for for the vision of like what is my life going to look like when i'm pregnant what is my life going to look like when i have this child and can i make space for that now and instead of all the doing 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 and a lot of the doing is a means of disconnecting from ourselves so really slowing down enough to say like how does this feel like how do i feel when i go four hours without food versus 
eat, you know, a good breakfast where I'm kind of sitting quietly? And how do I feel when I meditate versus when I don't, when I move my body versus when I don't? How do I feel when I, you know, use Mira and I'm connected to my hormones and where I am in my cycle versus when I don't, right? So really coming back to this self-connection and, and in terms of integrity, just like how are we showing up for ourselves? And then last but definitely not least, and I think, you know, it's a huge piece of the puzzle is optimal, optimal cellular health. And so, um, you know, a huge, a huge foundation of how I work and what I have seen work consistently again over the years is, is understanding that fertility is, is a part of our overall health and then they are not separate. And, um, when we're talking about, you know, egg quality is a huge topic, right? Regardless of the woman's age, it seems these days. Um, everybody's concerned about egg quality. The understanding that the quality of the cells in your eggs are the same about the quality of the cells in your entire body, right? So really thinking about what am I doing for my cellular health and my cellular functioning? And that does still come down to what we're going to get into, the do's and the don'ts. So let me, without further ado, get into that. Um, so again, what I see is like, you know, there's probably more and I'm sure, you know, we, um, I'm missing some, uh, this to me is, you know, I did prioritize and really think this through, um, my top 10 don'ts, um, when trying to conceive is don't do this alone. Even if it's the mirror community and using the mirror app, you know, I still think that's a way of giving yourself support and understanding your hormones, understanding your body. Um, again, it's, it doesn't mean that you have to go and hire a fertility coach necessarily, or, you know, use your resources to create, you know, a, a tribe or a team, but just knowing that, you know, you have places where you can go and get support and not feel so alone. Um, number two, absolutely do not do everything Dr. Google says. You will find everything on there that can be contradictory. And it's also very generalized, um, you know, as an herbalist and a practitioner for, for 20 years, um, I never, ever, 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 ever will put herbs in any of my books or any general recommendations for herbs because I think it's really reckless as an herbalist, as a certified herbalist, like it needs to be individualized. And, and that's like the problem with Dr. Google. Like, you know, I have a progesterone deficiency, you know, cause I took my mirror and my progesterone flow. Oh, Vitex, right. Not necessarily for everybody. So really finding, and this is where the quality medical care comes in, that finding someone who you can go to who will individualize care for you and help you work on your hormones. Same thing with number three, do not take all the fertility supplements. I cannot tell you how many times I see women coming to me and they're on like 30 different supplements. Um, you know, again, finding individualized. I do think there's like baseline really important supplements everyone should be on obviously a really good prenatal with methylfolate not folic acid good quality fish oil um some kind of antioxidant support vitamin d vitamin d levels are ridiculously important when it comes to hormone health when it comes to implantation when it comes to getting and staying pregnant the research is out there vitamin d is actually not a vitamin it's a hormone um, making sure your vitamin D levels, um, in the U S ranges are between a 50 and a 70, which I think is, um, nanograms per milliliter in the U S. Um, number four, do not let your diagnosis or your age define you. So thinking about, um, you know, I think this comes back to self-connection and integrity of really choosing to see yourself as a whole person who is worthy of all of her your dreams, their dreams coming true. Um, I have seen, like I said, you know, at the beginning of this, uh, you know, and I work with doctors who women upwards of the age of 50 using their own eggs. So um, I've seen women with FSHs as high as 175, you know, get it down and, and, and carry babies home with their own eggs. I, I've seen premature ovarian failure or insufficiency be turned around, endometriosis, PCOS get turned around, you know, um, I, I always believe there is hope that, and I, and I, I always say I have the luxury of having done this for a very long time, but I do see it working out for most everyone. So um, that is why I can be hopeful. And then um, I can't move this thing, but don't take no for an answer, I think is what number five says. And that means, you know, 
finding again the right team and if a doctor is going to say to you i'm not going to test your thyroid i'm not going to treat your thyroid because i don't think your thyroid has anything to do with your fertility you find another doctor okay uh seeking perfection does not work perfection does not equal pregnancy so coming back to the space of like what i said earlier like that 70 30 rule that 80 20 rule Am I showing up for myself in a way that I feel good about, right? And not in a way that's perfect because it doesn't, it doesn't tend to get us to the finish line. What gets us is the consistency and frequency. So sometimes what I have to do with women is they're too perfect. I actually have to get them to loosen the reins a little bit. Like I want you to, on the weekends, have a glass of wine, you know, make it organic um, or have a cup of coffee on the weekends. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be you know, uh, go against the grain a little bit, you know, although the research doesn't support that either coffee or alcohol in, in moderation and in, um, are, are negatively impacting our fertility. Um, it's these things in excess. And again, the consistency and frequency do not skip on the veggies. And that, you know, again, so important, six to eight servings a day and a serving is um, one cup cooked veggies. Uh, sleep, Chinese medicine, but really just general nervous system and going back to that safety conversation, going to bed after 11 p.m., I mean, from a Western perspective, will impact your melatonin. Melatonin will impact your, it's a master antioxidant. It impacts the ovarian health. Um, your nervous system needs rest. Your body needs rest to heal, recover, and thrive. And so again, one-offs or you have to work late one night or you're traveling or you're out on a fun trip with somebody, fine. But consistently and frequently getting to bed between the hours of 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. and sleeping seven to eight hours is critical to your overall health. Um, number nine, do not ignore your inner knowing. I just got off a group call um, with, with some of my students. And you know, one of the things that I always am working with them on is you know, what's in here? What do you know to be true about your fertility, about your goals, about your dreams? And and also if something doesn't feel right or feel aligned, like that's going back to that medical care team or um, in a partnership or, you, you know, in, in a supplement you're taking or in a dietary recommendation, right? Like don't ignore this, this piece. And I think that's like a huge part of, uh, you know, probably the larger goal for, for Mira too, right? And then Sylvia, like starting this company of like, um, women's health really does start with us listening to ourselves and us being in our bodies and understanding our bodies. And somehow, some way our current society has taught us to kind of ignore that and just, you know, do this, don't do that. And so really coming back home to you and to your inner knowing. And tip number 10, uh, do not skip meals. So eating consistently and frequently throughout the day is the number one most important thing. <laughs> so many things are so important, but really important to keeping your blood sugar regulated, which will keep your hormones regulated. And so again, one of the most common things I see, you know, women coming to me, I'm doing all the things in your books, I'm doing all the things and I'm still not pregnant. And then I say, oh, can I see a food diary? And they don't eat breakfast till 11 a.m. But they're up at six, you know, and they have two cups of coffee on an empty stomach. Uh, none of that is great for fertility or hormones. Blood sugar imbalances lead to hormonal imbalances. And, you know, again, the Mira is here to teach us a lot about our hormones, which is just so beautiful. Um, back in the day when I first started practicing, we'd have to go and get actual blood work. So it's really nice to have these tools and to better understand our body. Even things like a continuous glucose monitor, which um, would be really cool to see in conjunction with like estrogen levels and how they're moving around. I wonder, you guys are probably already looking at that research, but, um, you know, stuff like that is, is really where it's at and where we can really learn to hack our bodies. And also why I think we're able to help women now in their late forties conceive, even with their own eggs is really what we're doing is we're learning how to hack. We're learning how to best support. And we know there's a huge difference between biological age and chronological age. So, now our dues, um, do join a tribe of women trying to conceive and bravo to all of you, you are here. And um, again, 190, uh, 31, 39 of you, 91% of the women on here are actively trying to get pregnant. And so you guys are doing it. You guys are in a tribe and th those that are curious and wanting to get pregnant soon, same thing, you're, you're seeking community support. So like seriously, bravo to that. Like just keep that going because hearing from people like me, you know, um, 
I've probably seen every, and I'm not, not in a, you know, egotistical way. I don't mean it that way, but I've probably seen every possible fertility case out there or hormonal case out there. And um, you are not alone and, you know, things are changeable and fertility can improve even as you age. Hormones can improve even as you age. They can shift. Things can get better. And so you only really learn that though. Um, I think, you know, when you're in a tribe and there's, you know, anecdotal information goes a long way. Um, do take advice from a trusted clinician again, you know, versus Dr. Google, please. Um, supplements targeted for your body. I, I just think that that can't be, you know, it's so um, critical, you know, because some of the women again coming to me, maybe they're on too high of a dose of melatonin, doesn't serve their body. Maybe they're taking Vitex, which is actually negatively impacting them. Maybe they're taking you know, evening primrose oil and it's causing them to be too estrogenic, right? And maybe some women might need those things, but some women don't need those things. I do think there's like the basic protocol that, that everyone should be on, which again is a really good quality prenatal with methylfolate. And, you know, we're looking for at least a thousand um, micrograms of methylfolate in there, one milligram, some need more if you have MTHFR, but vitamin D, again, really important to get your vitamin D status checked and to be supplementing appropriately. Uh, fish oil, again, a powerful anti-inflammatory, really will help with regulating hormones. Probiotics for gut health, your hormones come from your gut. If your gut health is not in good shape, your hormones are not gonna be in good shape. And, and that's what leads to number four, like living an anti-inflammatory life. And so we don't have a ton of time in this, uh, presentation to really get into that. But, you know, generally speaking, going as organic as you can with foods, going non-toxic with bath and beauty products, um, emotional inflammation, I also feel is a really big piece to the puzzle. So really tuning into that conversation you're having with yourself in the privacy of your own mind. Um, having a vegetable heavy diet is, is hugely anti-inflammatory with lots of green vegetables in there, colorful vegetables in there. And um, that's, you know, more, more water in your diet than anything else, so, you know, alcohol or caffeine related, right? That's really where we're talking about when we're talking about going anti-inflammatory. Um, you know, there's, there's certain grains, there's certain vegetable oils, there's, you know, all sorts of things that can really lead to inflammation. And um, I do think in order for you to find the best anti-inflammatory diet for you is to do an elimination diet. Um, big fan of autoimmune paleo for any of my women struggling to conceive, especially if you have a known autoimmune condition. Um, and then number five, do ask for and allow yourself to receive support. So again, you're doing that here. And so you know, my hat's off to all of you guys, but um, you know, don't hold back and, and again, find the, the right team and the right care for you. But also, you know, I think it's difficult for women trying to conceive and you're in social settings and, and someone might say to you, oh, when are you going to have your family or when are you thinking about starting your family? And you're not always the best question, right? But I also think there's really power in sharing. You know, I had a miscarriage um, a few years ago at this point. And um, one of the most powerful things I did for myself and for my healing process was to share it publicly. Super duper uncomfortable. I'm not telling you all to go and like shout from the rooftops what you're going through, but what that did though was put me in a place of receiving support and care and so if it feels safe to you or in a safe environment with people you trust and love don't be afraid to share your story and what you're going through whatever it is because 99 percent of the time there's someone in your group who understands and can maybe offer some support and so i do think though when we you know i always say sharing lifts the shame when we share we do then put ourselves in a space to really receive. And, and for some women that sharing is much easier in kind of this, this chat, you know, where there's no face, no, no, you know, first name only kind of thing. And that's fine too. Um, yeah, I was, so, I felt so alone, was so nervous to share, but surprisingly felt better. Like I was no longer pretending a hundred percent. Like, I think that's about like our authenticity too. And like that level of integrity, really being connected to self and, and saying, you know, like I'm worthy of support here and guidance. Um, and here, you know, my, my last five tips here of again, nutrient dense diet, you know, I have, I have, and I'm sure there'll be questions so we can get into it more, but 
um, of everything really laid out in in my books and you know anything you could find on YouTube too for me all for free and just dig into it and and I'm not alone in my recommendations I think it's it's pretty much across the board that we're all really on the same page of like fat is super important protein super important lots of veggies super important um, and number seven that might be my star for the do's of like really allow yourself to be human you are human and if you are struggling to conceive or worried about your fertility you are so not alone and this is hard um but uh you know i'd like to remind you that you can do hard things and that you are resilient and just have compassion for yourself because that's like you know when we're hard on ourselves it, it really does feed I, I talk about it a lot in my book body belief which is really about autoimmunity um, but there's this emotional inflammatory, you know, trigger and cascade. And it's it's very well documented of what um, our thoughts and stress do to our neurochemistry and, and how they impact our overall physiology and even the aging process in our body. And so, you know, coming back to this space of like, I'm, I'm just having a hard time here. I'm a human, you know, having a, a difficult experience or really wanting this thing and I'm having a hard time achieving it and, and just finding ways to be easy on yourself. Of course, I've touched upon it multiple times. Um, six to eight servings of organic vegetables daily. It's not easy, even for me, the woman who, who wrote the book and, and preaches. I do really practice what I preach, but um, really getting the veggies in, that is a powerful anti-inflammatory, antioxidant approach to uh, health. Sleep, so dang important. Um, and, you know, Number 10, again, really easy for me to sit here and say, um, but just something to think about and take. Um, do trust the unfolding of your life and know your body. And, you know, that you're always where you're meant to be. And there's always tools, you know, like whether it's reading a book or using Mira that like can help empower you and educate you. And so to you know, I just think, know that you're exactly where you're supposed to be and that all that you need is here. I mean, that's a very spiritual thing and, you know, not everybody's super spiritual, so that might not resonate. But um, I do think for me as, again, a clinician doing this for two decades, I think it's it's, it's an important piece to, to pay attention to. Um, and then, you know, I do think that that one plus at the end, what is your why behind having the baby? It's like the first question I'll ask anybody. What is your why? Some uh, women forget the why. Some families forget the why, you know, whatever you're doing this alone, you're in a partnership, get back to that why, get back to that reason. Um, why do I want to grow my family? What is, you know, what is this um, mean to me? What does it look like? What am I hoping to bring through and pass on and, and create? And, and even you could just say, focus on the why of balanced hormones. Like, what is that why for you? Obviously, to, to feel really good, you know, when our hormones are, are balanced, I think we feel our best. And so really getting in touch with that why and that, that piece of the puzzle for you. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Sounds Sylvia. Great. Yeah, thank you so much, Amy, for that great presentation. I think it's very helpful and it's very practical, too. I saw a lot of really good questions down there and they showed the, uh, our audience really engaged. And so um, we will come back to, uh, you know, to those questions after the short presentation from uh, about Mira. So really appreciate that. Of course. So, um, so Mira is the, uh, you guys probably know, so Mira is the device that help you to conceive. And uh, Mira is really trying to eliminate the stress and the guesswork all from the TTC journey. So Mira tracks LH estrogen and the progesterone, and also we track FSH on the different test bond. So all of these hormone measurements are done at home using the urine sample. So it's very easy to use. You can do that anytime. You can do that non multiple times a day, and it's non-invasive. And all this uh, testing will give you the numerical number. So just like a uh, uh, what you were doing in the blood drawing, like when you see the doctor. Mm -hmm. So it's highly accurate. And with this hormone understanding, you can understand, you can see your full fertile window and that's up to six days. So that's maximizing your chance to conceive. And also it provides personalized psychoanalysis. We know one big challenge for the uh, 
fertility tracking is that the every woman is different, every cycle is different. That variability is huge. Your hormone level change fluctuates all the time, affected by life factors and uh, um, your emotion, you know, how you live your life. So Mira's algorithm is able to handle that. And we also have done a lot of clinical trial and uh, to, you know, um, showing Mira has the, uh, you know, proved to be able to um, help people to conceive faster, easier, and also with the superior accuracy. And uh, also it works for um, irregular cycle and the PCOS because you are seeing your numerical hormone value right now, right? So this really eliminates the confusion if you're using the OPK. So, um, and uh, in the, you know, in addition to hormone tracking, we has expanded to an uh, ecosystem of fertility solutions. So we also offer prenatal vitamin and uh, it's really great quality and with the uh, folic acid. And we offer the fertility tea, and TDC course, sperm tested kit, IVI, I, IUI kit, you know, things like that. So, you know, all these are trying to really give our user a, uh, you know, a tool, like a solution during the, uh, you know, the trying to conceive journey. So it's not just, uh, okay, you do a test and then, you know, what I'm going to do with that test the results. So a um, little bit background about the, you know, the hormones we track. So you probably, you guys probably understand that, you know, when we are about to ovulate our LH hormones, this blue line will go up. So those are the um, two days that you are most fertile in the cycle. And your E3G or estrogen will usually go up a few days before this ovulation happens. So by tracking the E3G and the LH together, you can have your entire fertile window, which is this you know, shaded green area. So that really maximizes your chance to, you know, this window so you can utilize that time to try to conceive. And the progesterone, the PDG, the um, yellow line, you increase after the ovulation happens. So if you have PCOS, your body might be doing different, you know, multiple attempts in the cycle, trying to trying to ovulate, and you don't know if that ovulate, ovulation happened or not. So by tracking the PDG, it confirms ovulation. So it will give you a really clear picture, say, you know, what happened during this cycle. And the last one is FSH. And this, this hormone is a good indicator for your ovarian reserve. So during the baseline, you're around day three, day four, and the FSH should stay low. If your FSH is going up and you know, over like six months in a year whatsoever, so that's the indication that you might be a little bit closer to menopause. And you can see also FSH has a little surge around your ovulation. So by using the LH and FS, FSH together, so it double confirms ovulation happened at that time. And with all this data, you know, when, once you test, this data will go to the mirror algorithm and the algorithm will learn. So the most important thing is that the you know, mirror is not just the hindsight to tell you, oh, this is what happened in the past couple of days. It will learn your cycle, learn your pattern. So next month, it will tell you, okay, what's likely to happen. Mm -hmm. So you will get easier to be prepared and you have more control. And we already helped more than 50,000 people um, to guide their fertility journey. And 84% of our users conceived, uh, you, you know, during uh, using our device within the first six six cycles using Mira. And uh, um, and just to you know to mention that this data is not only for healthy regular cycle, but also includes all the difficult cases like a PCOS, hormone imbalances, miscarriage, or, or whatsoever. As you guys could imagine, like you know, people who want want to really deeply understand cycle usually have some you know strong needs behind that. Maybe they have having trouble, if you have PCOS, you might have trouble to get good understanding of your cycle using OPK or using BBT whatsoever. So actually, you know, in within the mirror user, we have a lot of a, like a range of different situations. But even with that, we are still that variability, we're still able to help 84% of users to conceive within half a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, here just a little testimonial. So we, as we said, we have a lot of user and, you know, they have different cases like hormone imbalances and PCOS. And uh, 
when but the, with Mira, they are able to see their curve, right? So they see the quantitative results. So you can see the curve. You can see how the shape goes. Or maybe you even can see how many times your body was trying to ovulate during the cycle. So that was super helpful for you know people with PCOS to understand what's going on and find the real ovulation. And our best seller, which we launched late last year, is the, the Miramax ones. So these ones test the three hormones all on the same one. So that's estrogen, LH, PDG. So that means you only need to dip into urine once in the in the in day, and you got all three three hormones simultaneously, and the data will be synchronized to your app. So with these three hormones, those are probably the most important three hormones that controls ovulation. So you got a complete picture in the, almost the hands free, and then uh, um, you know you, you know you have very easy way, most probably the easiest way to get an understanding about the you know your cycle and your hormone profile. And uh, we already ha have more than twenty six thousand customers, uh, you know, that got, you know, pregnant using Mira. And here's a little link for the success story. And also, we have a uh, um a really nice Facebook group. So as Amy mentioned, trying to join the, the tribe. And here is a tribe for you mm -hmm. if you're not in there yet. So this Mira Fertility Club not only talks about. Uh, you know, what the result mean to me, you know, compare comparison for different results, but also there's people who haven't purchased the Mira and they want to understand to see, you know, how Mira could help them. And, uh, and a lot of times people share their personal story too, like right? their challenge and uh, sometimes their success case. So it's not just about product, it's more about the, you know, the experience in evolved, you know, around the product. Great, so that's all I want to say about the Mira. So our next uh, topic is a Q&A. So let me turn off the uh, sharing. Turn off the sharing, there you go. So we can, you can see a speaker. So let me see, are there some uh, nice questions? I need a little bit of time to go through this, but I remember one question that has appeared multiple times during Amy's presentation was about coffee. So maybe we can oh, go yeah. over that. Yeah, so there are people asking about is decaf okay, is empty stomach okay, it's like one cup per day okay, or, you know, Amy, what do you think? So I always say one cup of organic caffeine, caffeinated beverage a day is perfectly fine for fertility and for hormones, even during pregnancy. So it's around like under 100 milligrams of caffeine a day. I usually try to stay in the 80s. And um, the big thing is do not have it on an empty stomach, decaf or not, that it can trigger a spike in your blood sugar. And so a quick fix that most of my clients do that I also personally do is that I add a scoop of collagen peptides to my coffee every single day. And that way I'm getting protein. Sometimes I'll add some fat, like some butter or some coconut milk or almond milk or something like that, a nut milk. Um, and that way it's consumed with fat and protein and that will even out the blood sugar you could also just consume it with a meal mm -hmm. and decaf i think the big thing with coffee though like big asterisk is um make sure it's organic even decaf uh coffee carries one of the higher pesticide loads and we know the pesticides are negatively impacting especially our estrogen and estrogen impacted then fsh is impacted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Another question about diet. So someone was asking, is intermittent fasting bad? Because on the slide, you mentioned that don't skip the meal. Yeah, um, I do not find clinically that. And, and I think there's research now to support this as well. Intermittent fasting is not ideal for women who are trying to conceive. I think you can do a 12 hour or even maybe a 14 hour fast. So meaning last meal, I'm giving examples, 8 p.m. Next first meal, either 8 or 10 a.m. But I would not go longer than that. I do find intermittent fasting can be helpful in PCOS patients who maybe we need to get their BMI into a healthier range. And so I might focus on that, but um, for blood sugar reasons and for a lot of women, um, estrogen, if, if estrogen is too low, we just don't have enough, uh, as I would say, juice to ripen that follicle and really give us a juice, a healthy ovulation. Um, inconsistent eating is not great for hormone levels. Mm -hmm. Another question related to diet. So what's the difference between folate and folic acid? 
and uh, which basically one be like if folic acid is one step um needs needs a little more processing than methylfolate methylfolate is just more easily uh, utilized by your body and so many people have a genetic mutation i think it's upwards of 50 to 80 percent of the population when we're testing them uh, the mutation is called the MTHFR. There is a lot of, unfortunately, controversy around it, but the data is very clear. Um, I have a guide. If you go to amyrop.com slash MTHFR, I think that's the guide, and I have a ton of research in there, um, and I did that purposefully because some people say, ah, but if you have this MTHFR mutation, which most people do have at least one copy, you have a really hard time taking folic acid and turning it into methylfolate. And methylfolate is what you need to have in your body for a healthy pregnancy. And so uh, generally speaking, I just recommend using prenatals only that contain methylfolate, not folic acid. Great. And another question is about Chinese herb. Is that safe to consume if they're TTC? And should they? I think so. As long as you're working with an herbalist and an acu, you know, or an acupuncturist herbalist, mm -hmm. um, I have 90% of my clients are on Chinese herbs. Um, while trying to conceive, and then sometimes even in early pregnancy if they've had history of, of loss or anything. So absolutely. I am also really anal about my, where my herbs come from. Um, you know, we really want to make sure that they're third-party tested for pesticides and heavy metals. So that's just another little side note, but I think it's really mm -hmm. important as an herbalist. Sounds great. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the question about uh, nutrition. And I also saw a lot of question about the uh, hormone and uh, what they should do and uh, you know testing or so on so one question is saying that uh, her estrogen level is too low according to mira so what do i do to increase my estrogen uh naturally fat eat lots of fat in your follicular phase i also think um that like going back to that safety like that nervous system calming down the nervous system so there's no such thing as estrogen in chinese medicine obviously i have you know degrees in, in both western and eastern medicine but Chinese medicine, we talk about blood. Blood is what like fills up our, our estrogen or fills up our tank. And, and that's what makes that follicle nice and juicy. Um, and, you know, Sylvia, you know this too, of like, we, we need, you know, each follicle should have around 100, 150 units of estrogen um, that we know it's then ripe enough and, and ready for fertilization, ready for that sperm to come in. Um, and so estrogen deficiency tends to not lead you could still ovulate, but it might not be the most efficient ovulation and it might not be the juiciest of eggs. So I really focus on fat in the in the beginning of the cycle, blood building foods, bone broth, beets, uh, leafy greens, preferably cooked over raw vegetables too. Um, meat, I'm a big fan of, of good quality meats, you know, organic grass fed and uh, really getting your sleep, regulating the nervous system. So a lot of that will calm the body down and then you'll see estrogen go up. I mean, things like flax seeds can help too. Um, mm -hmm. Those have estrogenic properties. Chinese herbs can be really helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And another same made a question about how to increase progesterone. Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, uh, how do I say this lovingly? Like, you know, I get these questions all the time. So um, they all come from the same place. Estrogen and progesterone, it's all about that follicle. So, right, the follicle, the juiciness of that follicle, right, it goes through. You have a follicle, it's maturing, maturing, maturing. You ovulate, it, it ruptures, the egg comes out. What becomes of that follicle is called the corpus luteum, which then secretes the progesterone. So, if you want to increase your progesterone, you still got to work on the early follicular phase and then work on folliculogenesis. So, still comes back to like those top 10 do's and don'ts. I do think. You know, when I use Mira with my clients, if I see low progesterone and I really want to see it spike, uh, you know, I'd be curious what you say. Within 48 hours after that ovulation, that's when I want to see it spike and be up. If I don't, I will then recommend progesterone creams. There's some great over-the-counter ones. Um, I, I don't think you guys make one as of yet, but there's there's some other ones out there that I like. The Now one is a good one. Um, if you're working with an RE or a gynecologist that's supportive, you could consider progesterone testing in your luteal phase. Um, I also, I'll do what I do with Mira is I'll just say, okay, you know what? We kind of know your ovulation window. Just use one or two of your tests around ovulation. I want you to test every day in your luteal phase. I want to see what your progesterone is doing because if it's going up and down, that's not ideal for implantation. Um, but again, coming back to how to improve progesterone, it's still, you want to think about the whole cycle. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm very much, um, I'm not a Band-Aid approach kind of clinician. I just don't see it working. 
And so you could use the creams to help get your numbers up. But again, if there's gut health issues, you're not going to be able to absorb that cream to then have it impact the uh, overall production of progesterone from that corpus luteum. So you really want to go back to the basics and, and look at overall health and, you know, mental health, emotional health, physical health, nutritional health, and work on that. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And another question about how to use the, uh, the Apple Watch wrist temperature data in combination with Mira, or we can broaden that a little bit. I think there are people testing BBT and together with Mira. Do you think that's helpful or any suggestion about that? You know, I think that like falls into that, like allowing yourself to be human category and not seeking perfection category. Um, two decades ago, when I first started practicing, BBT was like all we did and all we had. And um, I found that it was, you know, and I said this lovingly, like crazy making, it was just way too much data. And there's so many variables with BBT, like was your dog in the bed? Was your partner like super hot that night? And like, you know, it threw up your temperature. So um, I think, and even with Mira, when I start to see the pattern or the trend, right? Like, okay, I know you're ovulating around here. And I know what your progesterone looks like here. I try to pull back like less, you know, um, hyper focus on these things. So, so sure, the BBT is important. I want to see it to be biphasic, right? I want to see lower follicular phase. I want to see you spike. I want to see it stay up. That's important. Um, but also allowing yourself to be human and know that you're not a robot. Some months are going to be different than others. And that's okay. Sounds great. And the Sarah is asking about after how many cycles of TTC, you should I seek for more help? I think she meant medical help. Yeah, six to 12 months. It really, like, again, that's like your inner knowing. Because I always say, too, you can set up the appointment with that reproductive endocrinologist or go to your gynecologist. And just remember that you're, like, discovering. You're, you're collecting information. It doesn't mean that you're saying, I'm doing IVF next week. You know, it's just, like, getting the right medical team that's aligned with you on your team because oftentimes like say you were a client of mine i'd want to collect more information you know the, the mirror affords me to do that now in in a much different way which is amazing but then i might say you know i need someone to look inside your uterus i want to see are there any cysts on your ovaries is there any fibroids in that cavity like what else is possibly going on are your tubes open but just know it's more like information collecting so listen to your heart but i also think don't wait too long. You know, I don't want you to look back and regret too. So really be aligned with yourself and how you're best showing up for yourself. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Amy, for that. Mm -hmm. So now I see, I see, um, you know, a few questions about Mira. I will try to quickly address that. Um, so one question is about, you know, when to test. Is there new to Mira? So do they need to, um, prior asking about, do you need to test every day using Max and Ovum once? You don't have to test every day. Mm -hmm. So um, for the Max, you, you, you know, the algorithm will suggest that based on your uh, your cycle, when you enter your period information, usually will ask you to test a few days before ovulation and then a couple of days to confirm ovulation after that happened. And for the Ovum once, depends on your goal. If you're trying to understand your your fertility level, you only need to test around the baseline, which is day three, day four of the cycle. And if you, you're trying to conceive, um, you know, detecting ovulation, so it will test around the ovulation time. So you don't have to memorize this, and the algorithm will be able to take care of everything. And I saw a couple other really good suggestions about Mira. I think one is they uh, they're saying they uh, you know they have this the data you know uh, tested by Mira and is there we can share with a partner. So the answer is yes. The Mira has a partner mode. It should be in your setting. So you go there, you know, take a look, and if you're, if you can invite your partner in that way, and the partner can register your account, and so your partner when they log in, they're able to see your data live. I and, have and a, a I have a suggestion. Can you make a clinician portal? Um, yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice would that would be comment. so helpful for me because oh, my girls are taking screenshots and then I'm kind of looking and I have to see. So anyway, it'd be helpful. Yes, exactly. So that's the next question. You know, someone asking is there a way they can talk to the doctor using the mirror data and you know let mirror connect with the doctor. The answer is yes. So we actually already have a clinician portal. So Amy, just uh, um, please connect yeah, with I don't cool. know whoever connect with you in our okay. in my team and just you know let's talk that one offline. But we already have one okay, for right. that can give you a access right. we just need to create an account for you so you know the doctor will be able to see it's more like a you know computer desktop version and you know all the data and testing some simple analysis and at, at the same time we're working on to uh, 
um, collaborate with some uh, telemedicine platform as well. You know, we believe, you know, if the doctor have access to the, you know, the mirror data and, the, you know, then you can follow up with a really personalized suggestion, you know, on the medical advice to a telemedicine. And those are usually covered by insurance too. I think that's really helpful for our users. So thank you for that suggestion. So, um, yeah, so I think that's we're, we're running out of time and there's still a lot of questions here and I really appreciate, you know, this engagement and for any questions, you, you know, about Mira and uh, please feel free to email support and uh, for questions to, uh, with Amy, I think you can find Amy on her website. I just want to mention the last thing, like everyone stayed up to now, we'll get the pin percent off on the mirror kit and the bundle and the fertility ones. So please use this code, the webinar TTC. So you can use this code on your website. If you want to restock your ones or you're new to Mira, you want to give it a try, here is an opportunity. So really thank you for everyone. And uh, I'm now going to uh, share a, the slides to this chat. So in case you want to you know, have a copy about what we talked today and also have a final two questions of the poll, please help us to understand how we did and what does this meet with your expectation or you, know, you have some suggestions. And while people are doing this, I will you know, give this to Amy. So Amy, please share something about where people can find you. Yeah, you can. I just typed it in the chat too. You can just find me on my website, amyrop.com. It's A-I-M-E-E. R A U two P's as in Peter Pan. That's what my mother would always say. Dot com, um, and yeah, my books are you know pretty much anywhere books are sold. Amazon seems to be where everybody goes these days for books, but they're on other places as well. And you can follow me on Instagram. That's a very active channel for me, and it's just at Amy Raup. A I M E E R A U two P's as in Peter Pan. Great. Thank Fantastic. you so much for having me. Um, yeah, thank and I you will so I'll much. connect offline about the portal. So thank you so much for having that too. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. And this webinar is recorded, so will be replayed on YouTube as well in case you miss anything. I just want to share that the uh, ninety six percent of our audience today said they want to watch another webinar from Mira and recommend it to your friends. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Great. You. So that's thank it you. for today, and I wish you guys good luck. And good luck. Uh, thank you, Amy. Thanks thank for you. Audience. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.